What's up guys, how you doing? My name is Mel. Welcome to home. So a little bit about the roof. The electrical work on the roof, the mechanical work up on the roof. You know, uh, you have cooling towers and all that. You know, uh, you have a lot of stuff up here on the roof, okay? Um, if you're a mechanic, you know, you could get overwhelmed when it comes to working up on here on the roof sometimes, you know? Uh, we have a VFD here that's working one of these uh, big exhaust fans. All right, and you'll find a lot of these exhaust fans up on the roof, okay? Uh, we have another one here. Uh, there's nothing really much to them, okay? Uh, uh, basically, you're going to bring power to your VFD, and then you'll bring your motor to the VFD as well. It's not really that much, you know, into it. Uh, there's more, more, more than anything. It's just a lot of mechanical stuff, you know, figuring out where you're going to actually mount your VFDs, how you're going to mount your VFDs, uh, where your pipe work is coming from and, you know, where your your uh, feeds are coming from and whatnot, planning that out and stuff like that, basically. Um, let me uh, give you a little tour. Basically, these are the uh, cooling towers. We have four different cells. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we had to feed four different fans for these cooling towers. Basically, the cooling tower, as far as the electrical goes, all you're going to be feeding is... Uh, you know, the fan, uh, you have some basin heaters and then some control circuits and whatnot. Uh, but for the electrical part, you, you really, there isn't really much to it. Um, you're you're going to probably want to just, uh, you know, obviously uh, put a disconnect for your actual cooling tower fan and whatnot. And, uh, you know, a disconnect or there might be a controller for the basin heaters as well. All depends on what, you know... Uh, the actual blueprint says uh, we have a whole bunch of pipe work up here as far up up on the roof as well a lot of plumbing and all that you're gonna run uh, some heat trace cables to these you know uh, pipes as well um, you'll have controllers for the heat trace usually um, as well so it, depending on how much you know plumbing there is up here and whatnot um depends on how many circuits you're gonna need for your heat trace circuits as well as you see we have multiple controllers here these controllers can hold up to 30 amps all right so depending on the circuit as long as you keep it under 30 amps then uh, you can run as much as you want as long as it's under 30 amps so you can see here that we have quite a few and we're pretty much doing all of the roof and uh parts of uh the 13th floor one floor below this there's some heat trace as well um, there's more heat trace throughout the building on the lower floors as well, but uh, right now we're talking about the roof Yeah, so pretty much we have um, you know more exhaust fans as you see here uh, Also, usually you'll also have a uh, service switch Okay, a, a way to turn off the power in case you know uh, one of the HVAC guys needs to service it or whatnot so even though you have a VFD um most of the times you'll still also have either a toggle switch or some kind of disconnect to turn off the actual power from the exhaust fan nearby. Okay, so being that the exhaust fan is here, they'll want a means to turn it off right next to it as well. Okay, that's how it usually is. All right, um, you have another exhaust fan over there. Right above me is the actual generator. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, you have more VFDs here, okay, uh, more for some more exhaust fans. As you can see, that, like I said, there's, a, there's quite a few, all right? Now over here, you're gonna see, these are the VFDs for the cooling towers, you know, cell one, cell two, cooling tower, and cell three, cooling tower, and cell four. All right, so these VFDs actually control the fans in the cooling towers. So we're bringing the feeds into this these VFDs, and then we're also bringing the motors uh, into this VFD as well. All right, and that's the cooling towers are there. We have the generator on this side. We'll talk about the generator in a little bit. Okay, coming around the corner now, there's another little v uh, exhaust fan here, all right, with a little uh, disconnect to turn off the power. 
you know, locally, you know. And here we go. These are more VFDs. Yes, more VFDs. These disconnects here for the basin heaters. Okay. Uh, they have some low voltage wiring in there as well for controls. Uh, the low voltage guys have their stuff in there as well. But this is our disconnect for the basin heaters inside the cooling towers. All right, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a heater that heats up the water inside of the cooling tower. All right, and we have four of those as well. All right, these VFDs are controlling other exhaust fans. These are some BMS panels. Okay, uh, there's a whole lot of controls going on up here. So the BMS guys, the low voltage guys have their own panels up here as well. This is one of the other disconnects for the basin heaters. There's four all together. Okay, like I said, you have little disconnects for the exhaust fan, so there's a way to turn it off in case they ever need to service it. They don't know where the breaker is, at least they can turn off the disconnect somewhere close to where the exhaust fan is. Okay, uh, yeah, you know, you have your lighting as well, a couple of outlets, and another big exhaust fan over here. Yeah, so um, we have, we actually have a, uh, a switch gear that's coming from the generator, all right, up here on the roof. Okay, so this is actually a big switch gear all coming, feeding from the generator. Okay, so this switch gear is all fed from the generator. Basically, when the emergency, uh, when the normal power goes out, the generator will kick in and it'll feed these, uh, this switch gear, which are feeding all the loads that it needs to feed, okay? So basically, this one here is uh, feeding all the emergency loads. This one over here is feeding all the legally required system loads. And these two bad boys are feeding the optional standby loads, okay? So, uh... And that's, you know, all being fed from the generator. These are all NEMA uh, 3 uh, enclosures. Okay, so it's rated for outdoors. As you can see, we are outdoor. Other than this, um, let's see if we take a walk into the ATS room. Yeah, so before we actually go, I just wanted you to see some of the enclosures. You know, this is the top portion of it. No water will go in. We also silicone some of them just to, for added protection. Uh, I went ahead with some steel threaded rod and actually supported it against this uh, wall behind it. Just, you know, for added protection. Didn't want it to like, you know, cause it is kind of windy up here. It can get windy. So I just wanted to make sure it was, it was being supported. These are all enclosures. We went into the back of the enclosure. We kind of used it like a Y-way for all of our feeds and brought it into the side of the actual panel, uh, the distribution panel, that is. So, basically, this is the electrical room, okay, up here. ATS room as well. There's another room back there that's holding another distribution uh, panel for the their pressurization fans. I'll get to that a little later. So this ATS here is controlling the uh, optional standby distribution panels. Okay, so this panel is backed up by the generator. Okay, so if the generator ever kicks on, it's going to feed this whole panel here, which is feeding the basin heaters, the cooling towers, a couple of panels, and some uh, exhaust fans. A couple of exhaust fans. So yeah, they're backed up by this uh, distribution panel, pretty much. So what's cool about this uh, ATS is not your normal ATS. It, it, it's actually... Um, a transfer switch, but it also has a bypass switch in it as well. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So basically, you know, it'll actually tell you the 
position of wherever the switch is on, okay? Whether it's on the normal source, uh, the emergency, okay? Whether you're on the bypass switch, you know, the normal side of it, or whether you're on the emergency side, okay? Tells you what the status is. You're obviously connected to the normal. Uh, the transfer switch is connected. The load is connected, okay? So, uh, yeah. Basically, they went with the um, bypass and um, bypass transfer switch on some parts and uh, some loads in the building. Not all of them have a bypass switch, but most of them do. Okay. Uh, what else can I actually show you here? We have three panels up here. We have an optional standby panel, an emergency panel, and a normal power panel as well. Uh, this distribution panel is taking care of multiple exhaust fans and heaters that are up here on the roof. Most of the, the heaters up here on the roof are uh, 480 volts. <clears throat> Not only the heaters on the roof, we only have one heater, a couple of heaters on the roof, and we have few uh, down below. This Lutron panel is controlling all of the lights on the roof. So this panel is controlling all of the lights on the roof. Pretty much, okay? Okay, so this is the small room, okay, that's inside of the ATS room. This distribution handles specifically just the stair pressurization fans, okay? Pretty much, I'm not going to explain what, it, it, what they do. The stair pressurization fans are always going to be on the top of your staircases in case of any fire. It'll let out the smoke or whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details too much of how it works because honestly, I don't really know the whole, you know, science behind of how that works. I just feed it. Anyways, <laughs> um, we have four of them. Okay, so um, basically four of these are going to their VFDs and they're feeding the actual fans from here. Now, this distribution panel is backed up by a um, ATS switch, okay? So this is backed up by the generator, okay? So that's basically uh, being fed from the legally required uh, system uh, generator switch gear. Okay, and as you can see, you know, it's used, uh, the fighter link was ran to it. Honestly, um, I'm still in the air. I'm not really sure whether I like this stuff. I think I'd rather run just some rigid conduit. Uh, this sheathing, the metal sheathing kind of like cracks really easy. You have to be really careful. Uh, when you're running it, you have to be really careful and it just takes so much more time because you have to be careful with it. It cracks so easy, and if you crack it, uh, then you're actually cracking the equipment ground, which isn't a good thing. So if you crack it, you're gonna have to put a splice box somewhere, and that's just more work, you know? Okay, so that's it for that.